This morning we get Matthew's version of the calling of the disciples. Last week, remember, we had John's version where it was basically the disciples just followed Jesus. And this week we get, we hear the announcement from the Old Testament of Isaiah saying that in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, a great light has shone because Jesus went to live in this region. And because of that, they were no longer walking in darkness. And as Jesus was walking along the sea, he saw two brothers casting nets, right? So they were dancing. They were fishing. I'm sorry, bad jokes, I have to do it. They were fishing and Jesus saw them there and Jesus said to them, what did Jesus say? Follow me and I will make you fishers of men or people are politically correct reading this morning says, I will make you fishers of men. And how does one fish for men or for people? What kind of bait do you use? Worms. <laughs> and it, and it, but much like, much like people, people much like fish, right? If you want to catch, and I'm not a fisherman, so if I say something wrong, you can laugh at me, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Then you can correct me. If you want to catch a certain kind of fish, there's a certain kind of bait you'd want to use for a different, you'd use different bait to catch different fish. I mean, I'm not a fisherman, but I know that, right? If you want to catch this certain kind of fish, you're going to make sure you have the bait that works to catch that kind of fish. So if we wanted to catch, and this is a really bad analogy, and this is where we could take this. I'm just doing this to show you that this is probably not what Jesus had in mind, right? Because when he said he's going to make us fish for people, it's not about making sure we have the right style of worship to get the right people to come here, right? It's not about having TV screens. Even though I think that would be really cool. That's not what it's about. It's not about having the right kind of music. It's not about having the right kind of of singing. It's not about having the right kind of of things that we do, lighting the candles in a certain way, having smells and bells. We have high church. We have low church. We have things that we do that attract people and don't attract people. And that's where we get into the mess if we start saying that this is what Jesus meant when he said to go and fish for people. Make sure you have the right bait to get in the people that you want to get in this week. See, that's not what Jesus meant when he asked Peter and Andrew and James and John to follow me and I will make you fish for people. You see, because each one of us has been called by Jesus. Now, it's easy for me to say that I've been called. I have a piece of paper hanging on my wall. You want to see it? It was signed by Nelda. I believe. I believe it was signed by Nelda. She was president of the council at that point in time. It was signed by Nelda and the then acting bishop of the East Central Senate of Wisconsin that says, I have been called by the congregation of St. John's to be your pastor. It's right there in red and black and white and tan. It's all kind of neat colors. If you want to go look at it, go look at it. I have that piece of paper that says I've been called. But I want to tell you that each and every one of you probably has a piece of paper too that says you've been called. And if you don't have that piece of paper, you still have been called. Martin Luther said that when you were baptized into Christ, that you were called into His ministry. You have a calling. To follow Jesus. What does that mean? You see, the other thing that that little call paper lays out really clearly is these are the things, as the called pastor of this congregation, these are the things that I'm supposed to do. To teach and to preach, to, to do the sacraments, preside over the sacraments, to be there in times of need, to do weddings, 
funerals, life passages. It's all spelled out. But what is your call? What is your call? And this is where we get scared. You see, we want to think that Jesus calls us to go and do things that are beyond our abilities. That Jesus calls us to leave family behind and go places. Like the only people that are possibly called by Jesus or the only people that are following their calling by Jesus are ones who have left families, gone across seas or doing missionary work or doing things that there's no possible way that I could ever do. And that's a lie. Because each and every one of you was called. When you came from this font, Jesus named you and claimed you as his child. And as we saw last week, Jesus gave a new name to one of the disciples, right? His name was Simon. And Jesus said, and I shall call you Peter, Cephas, the rock. Jesus claimed us. Jesus claimed Peter and sent him out to to do his will. Not because Peter had any great gifts. Not because Peter wasn't going to mess it up at times, but because God knew who Peter was and needed him to be exactly who he was to go into the world to give his message. You see, that's what it's really all about. Our passage this morning ends before a couple of verses. Verse 24 here says, So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various disease and pains, demoniacs, epileptic, paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Great crowds followed him. After what? They saw what he was doing. That's why they left that out of the reading this morning. Because it's about these four men who Jesus walked by him and said, come on, I'm going to make you a fish for people. And why did he say, I'm going to make you fish for people? What did they know? What did they know? Fishing. What were they? They were fishermen. Jesus knew that they knew about fishing. So here's a list of Jesus' calling um, in, a, in a different way from a woman named Anna Carter Florence. Jesus would say, follow me, you biners, and I will make you mine for people. Follow me, you farmers, and I will make you farm for people. Follow me, you bankers and tellers, and I will make you bank human life. Follow me, you builders, and I will help you build houses of God. Follow me, you shopkeepers, and I will make you keepers of God's shop. Follow me, you clowns and fools, and I will make you fools for God. Follow me, you landscape workers, and I will make you landscapers of life. Follow me, seamstress and tailors, and I will make you sew our lives as well as our garments. Follow me, cooks and chefs, butchers and bakers, and I will make you season and leaven and serve and preserve more than food. (laughs) Follow me, you friends, you parents, you children, you siblings, you neighbors, you strangers, you hosts and guests, and I will make you all of these things to every other human being. See, we get so hung up on the fact that our call is to go and do something When before these men were sent to do anything, they were called to do what? What did Jesus say? No. Say it louder. Follow me. Jesus didn't see Andrew and Simon and James and John and say, Go over there and tell them about my love. Follow me. You are called to be my child. You are called to be my follower. And in doing that, I am going to equip you to use the gifts that you've already been given in a life that will open up this world and show everyone the love that I have for you. You're this. 
And the only way that this works is when it has what inside of it? Batteries. And what are the batteries? Jesus. He called you to follow after him. He called you to be an empty vessel. He called you to be a light to the nations. To shatter the darkness. To use what you've been given in his hope and in his world. To show through everything that you do every day. How much God loves you. Not to go out and do something miraculous. But to be who you are. And to allow his light to shine through your life. So make yourself be an empty vessel and allow him to fill you so that his power can shine through you. Wouldn't it be really cool right now if I could make this thing just come on like magic? I would be just as freaked as you would. Trust me. (laughs) That's all he's asking us to do. He's not calling you to go and do something great. He's calling you to be who you are. Who he created you to be. And allow him to fill your life. So that you can shine out the darkness. Because if you've ever been in a really dark place. It only takes a little bit of light. To make all of that darkness go away. And that is you. That is all of us. Allow him. To fill you. So that you can be a light to the nations. And know that he's called you to be exactly who he's created you to be.